Hey guys, this is Heather from HealthyVeganRecipes.net. I hope you're excited. I've got a fantastic dessert for you today. It is one that I found over on a site that I love called ManifestVegan.com and that is run by a lovely lady named Allison. And she has come up with a pretty brilliant dessert recipe which is based on acorn squash. It is a chocolate squash custard Totally vegan and totally gluten-free. That's one of her specialties, is she makes everything gluten-free because she can't, she can't do gluten. So for those of you who are looking for some amazing gluten-free recipes, head over to her site. I'll post a link to that down below the video. And um, so I'm pretty excited about this recipe because it is perfect for holidays, which here in Canada is Thanksgiving this weekend. Everywhere else, you can have a practice run at this dessert and uh, figure out how you want to do it, how you want to play it. Um, she says you can have it hot out of the oven, or if you put it in the fridge for one or two hours, it's really nice because it turns firm and you can have like a slice of it. Now, I've just taken mine out of the oven and there's a little spoonful that's just been looking at me for a couple of minutes, just begging me to eat it. So let's give it a try. I don't want to sound biased because I did just make this, but it's amazing. Really rich chocolatey flavor, and um, she said when it's hot it has a texture like pudding. Totally right. Um, so I'm excited to try it cool as well because I like chilled desserts. But um, out of the oven, fantastic. So, uh, so yeah, for those of you who just want the recipe, I'll post a link to that. Um, on my site as well as her site and for those of you who want to see how it's made I will show you that. The first thing you have to do is bake yourself a squash and this is an acorn squash. It kind of looks like an acorn when you look at it. Um, I'm sure this would work with any type of squash you want to use but um, I used acorn because that was what was in the recipe. You'll notice that there are some holes in this squash and that's just from my fork. Before I put it into the oven, I poked it several times. That just helps the squash cook more quickly. You can also cook your squash whole if you prefer. It'll just take longer because the heat has to get in from the outside as opposed to being able to come in from both sides. One of the keys to doing this is to rub some salt on your squash. So I rubbed some salt on the inside as well as on the skin. It just helps the squash soften up. And I always like to bake the seeds from the squash as well. These ones I just seasoned with a bit of herbamir and some paprika. They're really tasty. Okay, so squash baking out of the way. And you might want to give that squash a little while to cool down so that it's easier to scoop the flesh out. Not necessary, but um, just helpful. So what I'm going to do first is pulse up the topping ingredients. One of uh, Allison's readers made a very good point that if you do the topping first in the food processor, then you can move on and do the squash without having to wash out the food processor. So. I've got all of my topping ingredients together in this bowl and they are some very delicious things. Pecans, a little bit of coconut oil, she said margarine but I didn't have any so I used coconut oil and there's very little in there so I'm sure it doesn't make a difference. Um, some sugar, some sorghum flour which is a gluten free flour and I managed to find some in bulk at my grocery store and um, I asked Allison for some ideas on substitutions for this flour. She says she often uses buckwheat flour and when you feel this flour it actually does feel somewhat like buckwheat. So there's the sorghum flour there. It's got a little bit of a pink color and it's fairly smooth but it does have a little bit of um, 
a little bit more fiber in it than your average wheat flour, so it is very similar to a buckwheat flour texture. Now, there's not very much flour in this recipe whatsoever, so I think that you would probably be safe with just about any flour, but buckwheat would be the closest um, in terms of texture. So you're going to pulse all of those things together in your food processor until they get to a nice crumbly texture and then set that aside. That's going to go on top. Now really with the ingredients that she's got going on in here, I'm tempted to stop and just eat this on its own. Alright, so throw your squash into the food processor and get it all pureed until it's nice and smooth. If you get a little bit of skin in there from the squash, it's okay, it's not going to kill you, don't worry about it. Um, and then throw in the rest of the ingredients once the squash is smooth, because you want to just pulse those ingredients in until they're just combined. And you can find all of those and the exact measurements, I'll post them on my site healthyveganrecipes.net and I'll also post a link to the original recipe on Manifest Vegan uh, just down below the video. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, Allisonless Pumpkin Pie Spice, which I don't tend to have around, but all pumpkin pie spice is made up of is mostly cinnamon. So I used about three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon and then the rest is a mix of nutmeg, allspice and ginger and nutmeg and all nutmeg and ginger you can do about the same amount um, just like an eighth of a teaspoon each and then just a pinch of allspice you don't need too much of it because it's a pretty powerful flavor so again you want to pulse all of those together in your food processor until you get a nice smooth chocolatey squashy deliciousness okay so there is my chocolate deliciousness and you want to make sure because there's some flour in here that you don't over process this otherwise it'll get kind of stiff and it never hurts to get a little tasting spoon and take a taste to make sure it's as delicious as it looks mm-hmm indeed okay so you're gonna take this mixture and put it into an oven dish otherwise known as a ramekin and get the oven going you're going to put it at 350. So get the get the squash mixture in here and then top it with the um, topping we made earlier. And then put it in the oven to bake. There's the topping. Bake that at 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. So I've been patiently waiting for these guys to finish baking. I did uh, spend some quality time with the spatula getting every last drop out of the food processor and I highly recommend it. Uh, anyway, the timer has gone off and they are finally finished and you can check them out right here. Looking gorgeous. So again, I will post the recipe on my site healthyveganrecipes.net and I'll also post a link below to the original recipe over on Allison's site at manifestvegan.com. So I hope you guys give them a try and I will see you guys next time.